Kim and Joe Shasky. Comcast Business Text Line. Is it really Bonte's last show? Ah, uh, you got your hopes up. No, it's not, buddy. I'm here long term, oh, baby. Hey there. Yeah, I'm going to be rocking with you. You'll be waking up to the morning rolls for a long, long time with your boy. Ha, 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 ha. Only you is, 707. AB. If only you could be that lucky. When I hear this Stone Cold music, I'm thinking that right now with Sabonis being, you know, so severely <laughs> injured where he can barely breathe, he's probably lying somewhere in a gurney, you know, in a hospital bed somewhere. <laughs> they need to have Draymond Green, like Stone Cold Steve Austin did, go and and, right. and visit him in the hospital with flowers <laughs> and then attack him in the bed. <laughs> I mean, this I is a... WWE series. No, this th is not basketball anymore. I thought I thought you were going to go with Draymond Green is going to wait for the team to go off for pregame warm-ups, and then the PA announcer or whatnot is going to just crank his beat up and chase it <laughs> or Sunday 12.30, and Draymond just walks out a tunnel, and he spits out a can of beer like, let's go! Or maybe it's a puff of weed. Who knows? I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Anyway, by the way, guys, man, this is so random. Yeah, we're gonna get back to the call. Yeah. To me. How about you, doctor? Oh, I'll take it from here. This is the best. This is the best. <laughs> that is the best. <laughs> the best scene with Steven. And I'm sorry. The scene with him and Booker T was the best. Was the best. It was the best. And then what did he say? We was on the check stand. Uh, check out all nine. Yes. Yes. Clean up all nine. That was one of the greatest scenes in wrestling history. And Booker T sold the hell out of it. Oh, dude. He sold the hell out of it when he was laying there on the check stand. The attitude era. <laughs> is the best era, right? It, uh, Raw still, is war? Yeah, Raw is war was sick. By the way, a random tweet for your Oakland A's. How about, hey, people saying, you want more A's talk? Good talk, more A's. The A's are trading outfielder Cal Stevenson to the Giants what? in exchange for Cal cash for considerations. The A's and Giants doing business together. But what together. about Matt Beattie? Oh, man. Why did we acquire Matt Beattie? By the way, you know who reported that news? I thought the guy retired from sports. Who? Carl Buschek, a former digital manager. He's covering A's baseball again. I for, thought he was burnt out what? on sports. For who? I have no idea who he's running for. Wow. There wasn't a guy who I've never met who wanted to say no to me more than Carl Buschek. Yeah. Can we do this? No. Can we do that? No. Can we do that? No. Well, sometimes you got to tell you no because sometimes, you know. Sammy Long traded. Oh, DFA is Sammy Long after acquiring... Cal Stevenson, huh? Where you go? Uh, we get to Anthony Sammy Slater, our Long, 95 the game insider. Uh, yeah, Sammy Long. And we got Slater. All right, we got Slater. By the way, before we get Slater, let me shout out some special, special people. Very special to the morning roast. Why is that? Tatiana at Mill Surgery Center. Oh. And Conrad Arenas, who is a firefighter in Hayward. Oh, nice. Husband and wife both listen to the roast every single morning. And they said they can't get enough of us. And we found out about them how? Well, just the streets are talking. Well, I heard that our boss had knee surgery, oh, foot well, surgery, leg go. surgery. Well, no, 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 well now he's going to be at home no, no, bothering the crap no, out of us. No, he's not. You just blew it. Let's go to Anthony Slater. Just blew it. Just let me handle that. Just blew it. It's supposed to be special. Slater it should only special. be on for three minutes. I have no idea. Slater. J. Green suspension. Good morning. What's happening? Hello. Hey, hello. But how are you guys? Hey, did you keep You're the handling this all very well? Yeah, I know you know, you know it, right? Uh, <laughs> did the baby? Did you keep the baby up with writing stories at a, at eight thirty eight p.m. We're watching Suns, Clippers, KD, Kawhi going at it. Russell Westbrook was the was baby really cool. offended with Draymond. Well, you know, well, was the baby up when you had to type and do an emergency podcast about the Draymond Green suspension in game number three? No, he's been snoozing good. He's been good. Nice, nice, nice. So. Were you surprised at the, at the suspension? Let's start there. Yeah, I mean, it's it seemed like during throughout the day that the indications were it was trending towards probably like fine. He'd probably, uh, I guess, escape the suspension. But I mean, the league decided to drop the hammer, uh, and you know, it came late in the day, right? That could have come earlier in the day. So I think there was a lot of dialogue behind the scenes, you know different discussions with parties involved and uh they put joe dumar's name on it which is obviously an interesting name for several reasons mm. i think that i also think the fact that adam silver was in the building when he was uh, yeah. doing what he was doing to the crowd it, it felt in some ways like maybe silver thought he was also doing it to the league a little bit right 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 so let's hold on, real, real quick chassis sorry uh, so they released a report yesterday through the nba communications twitter page and they put Joe Dumar's names, as you mentioned here. Uh, it was announced today by Joe Dumar's ex executive vice president and head of basketball operations that the suspicion was based on Green's history and unsportsmanlike acts. 
Now, you bring up Joe Dumars, and you say it's interesting for several reasons. One, I saw your tweet last night where you basically said that Joe Dumars was a longtime mentor of Draymond Green's. Obviously, Joe Dumars won two straight championships with the Pistons back in the late, late, 80s, late 80s, early 90s, but also because he was a Kings executive from 2019 to 2021 and close to the owner. Is that what you're referring to, Anthony Slater? Yeah, of course. I mean, look, like the league has to understand optics in the situation. Obviously, Joe Dumars was connected to the Kings. Uh, this is the job he left, you know, to replace Kiki Vandeweghe, which I'm sure people remember that name from the 2016 decision. Uh, he left the Kings. Um, so that's one layer. But again, the other layer is the one I mentioned that should be known here. I mean, this is like, go, you know, Google Joe Dumars and Draymond Green. Like, he references them regularly. Like, this is one of Draymond Green's, like, biggest mentors from, like, childhood basically pre-draft i mean we're talking about a bad boys pistons this is one of Draymond green's heroes in a lot of ways uh that is the one like kind of i guess you would say as, as the lead decision maker although i do think adam silver was very involved so i don't think there's a bias but obviously optically both of those things being involved in joe dumar's background is kind of interesting so like We'll get back into the Draymond portion of this. I find it interesting, the pivot from the Kings, Sabonis in particular. He went from being, ah, it's a basketball play, to going into the locker room, obviously talking with others, to all of a sudden coming out, basically WWE style with the neck roll, and them, you know, doing x-rays and everything. Like, they were laying it on thick. I mean, this was Vermont first press syrup that was laid on thick here. Because it feels like the Kings were, they were, they were begging for this one. Am, am I reading that wrong? No, you're not. I mean, obviously, you leaked the x-rays. Um, he waited, uh, He talked at, like, midnight. You know, I was in the Kings locker room. He talked so late, um, way after the game. And, obviously, even Mike Brown on the podium uh, kind of, you know, pushed out a little bit, like, wonder what the league you might do uh, just to push the idea of it out. But the reality is, like, smart by the Kings. Like, they want to win this series, right? They're up 2-0. They got the Warriors on the ropes a little bit. They know what type of, you know, counterpunch is probably coming in San Francisco Thursday night. No Draymond Green means whatever extra percentage that they're going to win this series. Like, should the Kings not want Draymond Green? Like, like no, it's I good gamesmanship. Smart move and played well. It's good gamesmanship. Yeah, no, yeah. it is. And it, you know, I don't know how much of it that played into it. I think this is a little bit more about the league versus Draymond Green than the Kings versus Draymond Green. But I just think that the Kings try to help it along a little bit. What do you think the perception inside the locker room, Steph, Clay, et cetera, wh what do you think they're feeling this morning? Well, you know, I mean, again, I was chatting with plenty of people in the locker room uh, post game, and they thought it, they scoffed at the idea that he would be suspended. They thought that, that Sabonis instigated it, you know, and that was made clear when they gave Sabonis a technical for the ankle grab, um, and also that the ejection was plenty of, of penalty because he missed the six most important minutes of the season. So they, I know, are going to, like, you know, there was a lot of surprise organizationally. Uh, right. Players, coaches, everybody yesterday that he was suspended. So I think that's one layer of it. But I think what you're also asking is, you know, Draymond Green, who, um, you know, in many ways has, has done this before. Um, it, it, there's probably got to be a little bit of a, you know, an eye roll, it, the, the fact that he's kind of put the Warriors in position again here to have to play without him in a, in a key moment because of some extra curriculums. No doubt. Anthony Slater here on the morning roll. So on 95-7 a game, this is a Warriors Wednesday brought to you by Kirby, your driveway mechanic. Check out Kirby at C-U-R-B-E-E dot -E com. That's C-U-R-B-E-E dot -E com. Slater covered his series as it, as it shifts to San Francisco tomorrow night. Game number four. We'll get into the game. Well, let's get into the game now. All right. We have no idea who Steve Kerr will start. Um, I was a little surprised with the starting lineup on Saturday or Monday night in game number two. But obviously, guys need to step up. Jordan Poole, Dante DiVincenzo. But it may mean also more minutes for Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. How are they feeling about Kaminga? Because some people think he's unplayable. He only played four minutes uh, Monday night against the Kings. Is that what we're looking at here? 20 minutes for J.K.? Uh, they're figuring that out today because, again, like, uh, you know, texting and talking to people last night when this suspension came, like, this really did surprise them. So, like, they weren't preparing for having to make the starting lineup decision. So mm -hmm. I assume um, that's going to be the coaches' meeting today and the practice today. But Kaminga, to me, is has always been a much more effective player when you give him 
25 guaranteed yep. minutes. When he goes into a night knowing, like, look, I'm, I'm playing a lot tonight. Yep. Uh, he's just more engaged, focused. When it's like, hey, you're going to get four minutes each half, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just, like, comes out there a little bit, you know, lost. Right. Um, that's just how he is. So, yeah, I, I do think that's one intriguing option. Um, but in this series, he just hasn't defended well. And, you know, some of the Kings' actions, and he's not rebounding. I know that's something Steve Kerr continues to mention. Uh, and I thought it was interesting when Draymond gets ejected the other night, it was Moses Moody who he went to, right? Yep. That was the guy who subbed in for him, which mm-hmm. that was that an out of nowhere, right. uh, addition to the rotation in that second half. So I think there is a chance because Kirk clearly believes that Moody's style of play fits this series that you see more Moses Moody. And then the other option would be, uh, if his ankle is feeling right, which we don't know with Jordan Poole, but if it is, you know, one of the things they've done in the past is just like plant pool in the starting lineup and try to supercharge the offense. Yep. Maybe you do that because you got to get him going. No doubt. You have to get him going. One of seven in game number two. He was MIA in that basketball game. But I want to play this from you. We just played it last segment here uh, with Shasky. J.J. Redick off first hit. I don't know if you've heard this yet, but here's J.J. Redick on the officiating. Now I want to ask you if there's any validity to what J.J. Redick had to say. They have allowed too much. I have no problem with physical play in the playoffs. But if Steph Curry's not allowed to move off the ball, if you're preventing players from running down the court and you're allowing that to happen, there's a play uh, late late in game two where Kevon Looney's right underneath the rim, ready for a rebound. Sabonis crashes in, pushes him in the back. They don't call the foul. That's a foul. The referees have dictated too much in the Kings' favor in this series. I really believe that. And I don't know if it's the home crowd or whatever, I rarely complain about the referees. In fact, I don't even know if I've ever complained about the referees. I think they're great. But if they're going to come back in this series, they've got to call the game the way the game is supposed to be called. What do you think about that rant by J.J. Redick? Surprising. <laughs> Coming from J.J., like like he even said it on the uh, little segment, like it's not something he normally does. You know, I mean, one thing about J.J., he is an off-ball shooter, right? Like, that's how he made mm. his life, is a little bit like Clay, a little bit like Steph, Good which is point. like, you know, trying to uh, navigate around screens, use different tricks off the ball. And maybe he's just watching some of the stuff that Steph does off the ball, and he's just believing that there's a little bit too much, like, wrestling going on. Um, but in reality, yeah, like, that's part of the Warriors game plan against the Kings. It's what they're kind of doing to Kevin Herter and uh, Keegan Murray and some of the stuff the Kings do. I have not personally felt like a real, you know, heavy bias, uh, you know, against the Warriors and the officiating. I mean, like, there's been difficult situations, tough calls. I mean, obviously the most impactful decision that the refs or the league has made now is this Draymond Green ejection and then suspension. But I don't know. I mean, like, you guys have been watching. Have you felt some, you know, heavy tilt towards the Kings? Well, the beginning of that third quarter I thought was a little suspicious. I don't think I've ever seen a game where there's five fouls in a minute. It was a little yeah, wild. and maybe maybe a couple couple of them were a little bit more touch foul, right. but like you know, the Warriors are like Kings are playing really physical, and they the Warriors agree. That's what they do. Yeah, you know, the Warriors led the league in fouls this year. Yeah, that's true. They reach. Yeah. Well, they do reach a lot. So, so Anthony, on that same note, uh, I've seen a lot of people come at, uh, at me and Bonte in messages and tweets and things like that, and this is their insinuation, and I'm not sure I subscribe to this. So bear with me here, but. The league is already saying that, hey, you guys are spending so much in luxury tax. That's unfair. We're changing some of those rules. The referees at numerous times have felt offended by the Warriors and their actions over at least the last year and a half, two years. Does any of that? factor into the Draymond suspension. I know that Draymond himself has his own laundry list of, of things that he's done. But does, is there any element of that from your, from your point of view? No, I think the Draymond suspension is a Draymond thing. And I think the league, okay. in, this, in a uh, strange way, was like trying to be kind of transparent about it, right? You uh, you don't often see press releases from the league that do have that level of detail. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no, I, I just, I, that decision, singularly, I think, was just about Draymond. Okay. All right, Anthony. We'll That's see a question you tomorrow a lot night. of fans yeah. were asking what, us. What time is shoot around today? What, what time will the players and coaches be speaking today? The practice availability is projected around 2 p.m. Today. 2 p.m. I may try to make that today. Is Sabonis going to be in or out of the cast that he's put himself <laughs> in over the last two days? Just Maybe out of curiosity. A black jacket, you know, yeah. the NFL players wear. Yeah. <laughs> Please hey, hey, help. Let, let me know where he's right. living. I'd like to look, send him a nice flower no, basket no, dude, and, a, and some fruit, hey, you know. Look, I hope he gets well. Anthony, wasn't it pretty funny, though, last <laughs> night when the suspension came down? 
an hour later, Keith released <laughs> it. Was ridiculous. Bonus. <laughs> it was. What's you know? One thing I will say about the guy's one of the toughest players in the league. I mean, he's played most of the season with like a broken stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, obviously there was a, a level of like theatrics involved to reach a result that was reached. So, yeah. hey, no. Kings are like you mentioned the gamesmanship or the schematics on the court or you know the X's and O's of the series. Kings are having a great series. Mike Brown's having a great series. Yes. This is some impressive stuff. Right? I know it'd be De'Aaron a shame Fox. if they lose. De'Aaron Fox. Who you think Warriors bounce back in Game Three without Draymond Green? Yes, but man, it's going to be difficult. Um, you know, if this was the one of the two games the Kings want to get in chase, like this would be the one um, with them on their heels. But you know, one thing I will say, and I mean, I, and it was kind of a cliche, but uh, role players do play better at home. You just saw what Alex Lynn did, what uh, Trey Lyles did, what even Malik Monk, who's typically mm-hmm. kind of a role player, did in Golden One. And what Dante DiVincenzo didn't do, what Poole didn't mm. do, what Kaminga didn't do. Usually that flips traditionally. We'll see if it does. But if that does, that changes, you know, the, the complexion of games. All right, Slater, you're the man. We love you. Get some rest, man. And Thanks, then, uh, I may see you guys shoot around today. And then, of course, game number three tomorrow night at Chase Center. Good stuff, Slates. All right, fellas. Anytime. R95, 70 Game mm-hmm. Insider, Anthony and Slater unlike on the, the morning roast. Anthony Slater uh, or the, the, you know, Austin Slater, who's on the Giants, our Slates is not a platooner. No. And he doesn't. He plays.